<clears throat> so yeah just just to remind you guys uh, about what we are currently studying um, so previously we uh, studied about this linear system um, but in this case only when B is inside of the column space of A uh, we can uh, find the solution for X but otherwise yeah we cannot find the solution so we concluded that uh, there is no solution but in the case of least squares problem we are handling the same problem but uh, we uh, are handling this kind of approximate problem even when B is outside of the uh, column space of an A okay so how we approximate uh, this problem uh, into this guy is is, uh, is by changing or converting B into B hat and uh, geometrically yeah this is a uh, kind of easy to understand so <clears throat> when B is an outside of column space of an A so this is uh, typically the case where we concluded we conclude that uh, we have no solution in the case of an uh, exact uh, linear system but uh, we are uh, approximating B uh, to its uh, orthogonal projection onto this column space of A. So now uh, we change this B uh, into B hat. Okay, so the difference is this B hat is now inside of, uh, uh, so this is uh, this, inside of the column space of an A. Okay, so here uh, the next step for us is to uh, determine this B hat in a particular way from B, right? So how we determine this, or how we approximate B into B head is through or via uh, this orthogonal projection. So, so we uh, project this B orthogonally to the subspace of, I mean, the column space of an A, which means uh, this line or this projection point. And then uh, if we consider this vector starting from, from B head to B, so this vector should be orthogonal to any vector from the column space of A, right? And uh, <coughs> yeah, and uh, uh, intuitive meaning of this process is that uh, the distances. So you pick up any other point from your subspace uh, or this column space of A, and then suppose you approximate this B into some other point. Okay, so let's call that vector as B tilde, okay? So this point, we have a B, B tilde, and then uh, if we approximate B uh, into B tilde, and then all, uh, the distance between these two points, the original point B and B hat, I mean, that distance is always bigger than the distance between B and B hat, which is a orthogonal projection. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah. Basically, what we are doing is to change B into, yeah, so this is the same as AX equals B hat. Um, so here, uh, B hat is the closest point of B uh, to this column space of an A. So that's how we approximate B into some point in uh, column space of A. Okay, so... <clears throat> Once we find once we find this B hat, which is our uh, orthogonal projection, and then since it is definitely belonging to the column space of A, we yeah we uh, we uh, we know um, this approximated version of the linear system will always have a solution, right? And that solution, uh, let's call that solution as A uh, uh, so X hat, okay? So there should be, uh, there should exist some x hat, okay, that satisfies this x times x, uh, sorry, a, a x hat equals b hat, okay. So once we projected b onto column space of an a through the orthogonal projection, and then if we use that b hat, and then we can always find the solution for x hat. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so once we um, understand this relationship and then uh, we can now represent this guy this vector okay 
So that vector is b minus b hat, and that is b minus a x hat. Okay, and this vector is some kind of a z vector that we, uh, uh, yeah, that we studied uh, in the previous chapter of orthogonal projection. And this vector z should be orthogonal to any vector from column space of an A. Okay, so suppose A has maybe this three columns, and then that column is A1, A2, A3. So these are the column vectors that A has. And then <clears throat> we can consider the inner product between uh, this vector, which is belonging to the column space of an A, and then its inner product with this guy, this error vector. So a, um, a1 transpose, which is a, a row vector, um, times b minus a x hat, which is this vector. So that vector is a column vector. That should be 0. And then a2 transpose, since this vector is also one vector in this column space of an A. So that should be also orthogonal to um, our error vector z or a, a b minus a x hat okay so yeah for uh, x3 we can do that as well so all together if we rewrite this part as one single matrix vector form yeah matrix vector representation we uh, we just compile these three row vectors as one single matrix Let me use another color so here this part so this part we can represent that as a transpose, okay, and then a transpose um, b minus a x hat should be zero zero zero, which is this guy, right? So this guy is the same thing, <laughs> okay? So. So yeah, we obtained this at the at the end of the last class, right? And uh, this is a really really important uh, equation, and this is called a normal equation of your least squares problem. So initially we started from here, okay? And then yeah, uh, more formally uh, this least squares problem, yeah, let's just remind ourselves about what the original problem was. So what is exactly the meaning of this approximately equal? Okay, so that is this guy. Uh, we want to minimize b minus ax uh, the two norm or the length uh, of this vector b minus ax. Okay, so that vector is corresponding to this vector, right? So we uh, we select some x, and then a x might be somewhere here, and then we consider the difference vector from b uh, of this a x. Then we will obtain this vector, and this vector is corresponding to this. Okay, and then we consider the length, right? And then uh, we cons yeah we minimize uh, that length. Okay, depending on x. So we basically want to choose the optimal or best x that minimizes the length of this difference vector between the given b and uh, uh, a x by choosing uh, some vector x. Okay. So uh, the meaning of this a x is just uh, uh, any one point that we can have in our column space, right? So this is a x is a basically a column, yeah, the linear combinations of columns of an a, right? So that's the meaning of an a x, right? So we have a freedom to choose x, but we want to uh, minimize. We we want to choose the vector x so that the a x, which is this point, uh, the difference between b and this a x uh, is minimized. Okay, so we are basically one. Uh, uh, are minimizing the lengths between these two vec uh, this vector okay so this is formally called uh, least squares problem okay and then starting from here 
yeah, we obtained uh, this equation, and then, um, yeah, so let's rewrite this equation in this form. Um, a transpose B minus A transpose A x hat equals 0. Okay, so let me just uh, remove that and then put the equal sign here. So this is our uh, normal equation. Okay. So again, we started from something different from linear system. Uh, so this is clearly not a linear system. This is some minimization problem or some optimization problem. But the solution for this problem is actually obtained by solving this exact uh, this linear system. Okay, and this linear system will definitely have a solution. <clears throat> okay, so okay, so let me just rewrite that equation a transpose a x equals a transpose b. Okay, so Suppose a is 4 by 3, yeah. It could be 3 by 4 and 2 by 2 or any, any matrix, okay. a can be any matrix, but let's just uh, uh, use this kind of example. In this case, you guys know a transpose um, is 3 by 4, right. This is 4. And then a is 4 by 3. Okay, so this matrix will be uh, in the form of 3 by 3 matrix. So this is a, a transpose A. Okay, so we always have a square matrix in our uh, linear system. So here, this part is our new A, and this part is our new B. Okay, so that way, um, we can rewrite this guy as some kind of ax equals b. So this is a, just a linear system. But let's check out what is our a here and b here. So a is actually this a transpose a, okay? And then b is actually a transpose b. <clears throat> okay, so uh, yeah, let's just check the size of a transpose b. So 3 times 4, and then B should be just a column vector that has the dimension of 4. Right? So this will be formed as a vector of the size of 3. Right? So this is a transpose B. Okay? So altogether, 3 times 3 and our new uh, let's see so x ah okay yeah sorry about that yeah so originally this guy x was three dimensional vector right so we will also have a three-dimensional vector x, which is the same as this guy. Okay. So these two vectors are the same, and then yeah, they have the same lengths. Okay. And then in the case of b part, so this part will be a transpose b, which is this guy. Okay. So we now always have a uh, linear linear system where our matrix A is just a square matrix. Because a transpose a is always a square square matrix. So in general, a is is it typically m by n or n by n? Okay, what you? You went? What were you? N by m. M by n. Okay. So suppose the matrix size of an a is m by n. Then a transpose a is n by n, right? So basically, a transpose a 
is not no yeah the, the size of it is just the number of columns that you have in the original matrix A. Okay. So especially in this case of square matrix, and then uh, we can kind of consider the um, uh, invariable matrix theorem, right? So. <clears throat> um, so if the columns of A transpose A are perpendicular, uh, sorry, are linearly independent. So, yeah, so let's consider this A transpose A, the matrix of an A transpose A. So it has a three, three rows and three columns. And then, uh, yeah, let's suppose it has three independent columns. So each columns are independent, each columns, uh, each column is independent of each other. And then automatically that matrix is what? Yeah, that matrix is invariable, which means so we have two aspects. One is the columns of some matrix are linearly independent or not, right? And also there is another aspect uh, where uh, this uh, our co uh, our columns of column vectors are spanning the entire space. Okay, so in this case, three by three. So there is a two issue. One is three column vectors are linearly independent, and the second issue is the same three column vectors are uh, span <coughs> R three. Okay, because they are living in this R three. Right, so the there are two. There are these two different angles that we have to consider. Okay, but uh, in the case of this uh, square matrix, where we have the same number of rows and columns, and then either of them is satisfied, and then the other is also satisfied. Right. So that was the point of this invariable inver matrix theorem. Okay. So either of these two is satisfied. And then it means this matrix A transpose A is invariable, right? So that is the same thing. Okay, and then yeah, we will uh, also learn about some other equivalent characteristics starting from here. Okay, but uh, yeah, but uh, that's the. The follow, yeah, the following theorem after we first study uh, this theorem thirteen. Okay, so this theorem thirteen. Yeah, back to this case. So all these things that we learned today. So that theorem is all about this kind of uh, logical flow. So it's just a re uh, restating. Yeah, restating uh, what we just uh, learned from the previous slide. So <clears throat> it is saying the set of linear uh, least square solution of AX equals B. So least square solution means, again, yeah, so again, this guy, this guy. Okay, so that is the least squares problem of this ax equals b okay and then uh, the solution for this guy coincides with so this means it's just the equivalent so their solution set are exactly the same between the least square solution of this guy and also the solution set for this normal equation so starting from here we derive, yeah, we derive that uh, the solution for this guy is always satisfying this normal equation, right? But uh, here uh, it is saying that uh, their solution are exactly equivalent to each other, which means from here, starting from here, we have to conclude that the solution of this guy is also the solution of this guy, right? So if we started from here. And then uh, if we concluded that the solution, yeah, all the solution from here satisfies this equation, and then it means uh, so this guy, yeah, let's so call, yeah, let's call that as one, and let's call this guy as two, and then 
uh, in terms of uh, set representation so this is something like this so uh, this set of one uh, belongs to set two okay? so this is subset of two but uh, uh, if we wanted to uh, prove this, this these two sets of one and two are exactly the same and then we also have to prove uh, this guy right so starting from two we have to uh, uh, prove that the solution uh, satisfying this also satisfies this okay but that uh, proof yeah that proof is uh, also uh, quite simple so it's just a reverse operation that uh, of uh, what we learned from the previous slide so suppose uh, we have x hat that satisfies our normal equation okay number two okay and then we can manipulate or rewrite this equation in this form so this is exactly the uh, reverse operation so minus ax equals b equals zero and then this can be factored uh, as this form a transpose ax hat minus b equals zero okay and then it means so let's rewrite this guy as b minus ax hat and then uh, this also means b minus ax hat is uh, orthogonal to yeah any column vector from any column vector of a right okay and then <clears throat> yeah so this is what this sentence says b minus ax hat is orthogonal to the rows of a transpose or in, uh, in other words, the columns of A, okay? So this vector is orthogonal to any columns of an A, okay? So what is the column space of an A? So what is this column space of A, which we thought of as this plane? So column space of A is just a span, yeah, the, all the possible linear combinations of the columns of an A. So we have like a three columns of A, and then column space of A is just uh, all the possible linear combination of these three columns, right? So any vector in column space of an A can be written as the linear combination of three columns, but our B minus AX hat is orthogonal to each of these column vector A1, A2, A3, okay? So that is yeah, that is what we uh, derived from this equation and also what this sentence uh, means, okay? So it means even though this vector, yeah, we only show that this vector is orthogonal to only three vectors that we have, a1, a2, a3. But our column space of an A is nothing but just a linear combination of these three. So it means um, this vector is orthogonal to any vector in our column space of an A, which is a kind of a linear combination of these three vectors. Okay, so our conclusion is that this vector is completely orthogonal to the column space of an A, which means we pick up any vector from column space of an A, and then that is orthogonal to this vector. Okay, so that means b minus a x hat belongs to W perpendicular, where W is this guy. Yeah. Uh, A transpose B가 B 해시 되냐고요? 어, B가 B 해시 되고, 네, 그러니까 어, 이건 어디서 왔냐면, so C. So what is b hat? So from this figure, yeah, so it's a little dirty. So let me just. So b hat simply means this orthogonal projection of b onto column space of a. And that b hat, uh, because we know uh, b hat has the solution uh, in this problem. So we can, uh, yeah, we can rewrite b hat as ax hat. 
Okay, so B hat is AX hat. So here, this part is B hat. Okay, so intuit yeah, intuitively that is an orthogonal projection of B onto um, a column space over there. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, but uh, in, the, in the case of this equation, how we obtained this was by uh, multiplying a transpose on the left hand, yeah, left side of this error vector, b minus a x hat. Okay, so again, this vector, the meaning of this vector is this guy. Uh, this vector, right? So that vector should be orthogonal. So any vector from column space of an A. Okay, so that is the point. Okay, so yeah, we uh, yeah we reach it this point where uh, we reach it the uh, fact that uh, B minus A X hat is uh, uh, orthogonal to the column space of an A. So this guy is belonging to here. Okay. Okay, so. This part, yeah, B can be rewritten as this form. And we know this guy is W perpendicular. And then we learned that the orthogonal projection, uh, sorry, orthogonal decomposition theorem. So any vector, can, any vector B can be written as, yeah, written as a kind of summation of the two parts where the first part is belonging to the particular subspace W and the other part is belonging to W perpendicular okay so here how yeah how do we know this part is belonging to W it's simply just a linear combination of the columns of an A by using the linear combination coefficients stored in A hat uh, sorry X hat right so this is clearly belonging to W which is uh, our column space of an A okay so this is uh, clearly belonging to W perpendicular. So we now have a representation of B as the summation of these two parts. And then from the um, orthogonal projection or orthogonal decomposition theorem, this decomposition is always unique, which means this vector should be always the um, orthogonal projection of B onto your, uh, your uh, subspace W. And then this part is a uh, the remaining part. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, <coughs> by the uh, based on this uh, uniqueness of this orthogonal decomposition, this one should be the um, orthogonal projection of B onto um, uh, your subspace W, which is a column space of an A. Okay. So. So this one should be um, orthogonal projection of B, and so that orthogonal projection geometrically, we know that uh, that orthogonal projection of B, which is a B hat. Um, uh, so this X hat uh, will become the solution of this linear system. Okay. Yeah. Again, here uh, we. Uh, yeah, here. The main, uh, yeah, main fact is that this part is orthogonal projection of B, and then if we write, yeah, if we rewrite this part as B hat, and then forming this linear system, and then X is a uh, also a least square solution. Okay. Okay, so yeah, the uh, proof is a little bit tedious, so. Um, I think it's okay uh, not to completely understand every uh, step of this proof, but uh, the main fact that you should remember is that the solution of this guy is always the same as the solution of this guy. Okay, so here the solution, yeah, the problem is not actually this, but actually this least squares problem, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> Let's check the um, example. So suppose ax equals b. So we want to solve this uh, linear cis, yeah, uh, least square problem. So a is given here and b is given here. And then we first form a transpose a, which is this guy. And then a transpose b, 
which is this guy and then we now have this um, linear system where we have this a uh, square matrix a transpose a as this uh, matrix okay and then yeah even without solving this we always know this guy is always uh, having a solution okay and then okay so here in this case in order to solve this problem we first yeah, so this one is a transpose a. We first obtained a transpose a inverse. Okay, and then we just uh, multiply that inverse on the left hand side. Okay, and here as well. So that's how we obtain this x hat, which is the solution for this normal equation. Okay, and then okay, this is typo. Gen, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, probably the last theorem that we will learn in this chapter. <coughs> so A is m by n matrix. That's the starting point, and then the three uh, statements are equivalent to each other. Okay, so. Let's start with the simplest one. So the columns of A are linearly independent. So here, A is rectangular matrix, not a square matrix. So <clears throat> A has some something like this. So we have three columns, but four rows, four by three, or something like uh, this kind of a, a rectangular matrix. Okay. In this case. Um, suppose they are uh, they have uh, linearly independent columns. So three columns are linearly independent. Okay. In that case, now we consider the least squares problem, which means it's still the same thing. We consider this a x equals b, but the b is not necessarily in the span of the column space of an a. Okay. So b can be outside. So we are basically considering the least squares problem. So in this case of a least square problem, uh, we consider this guy, A transpose A. And then uh, yeah, how we obtain the solution for this least square problem is by constructing this normal equation. right? And then solve for uh, this normal equation. And then that x is actually uh, the solution for our least squares problem. Okay. In this case, uh, we are considering this A transpose A. So, <clears throat> in this A transpose A, uh, uh, this matrix A transpose A is invariable. Okay, so that's the same statement, I mean logically same statement, uh, as saying this columns of an A are linearly independent. Okay, so here you have three linearly independent columns. So, in that case, A transpose A, which is a 3 by 3, so three by three matrix will be always linear, uh, will be invariable. Okay, so that is the same thing, and that's what this theorem fourteen says. Okay, and then uh, the statement A naturally uh, follows from the statement C, because in this case, suppose A transpose A is invariable, and then. <clears throat> We can simply uh, obtain the solution for x <coughs> as a transpose a inverse a transpose b. So this is always unique because a transpose a <coughs> is invariable, which means uh, we can uh, obtain this inverse matrix of an a transpose a. And so we can just multiply that on the left side of each terms. In that case, it will give always this kind of unique representation for our make our uh, vector x so that way we will always have this unique solution which means this equation will always have one exact one solution for any given b okay Okay, so here, what is the missing link? I mean, uh, 
there is a, a logically missing part when understanding this. All of them, or <coughs> so here uh, starting yeah, moving from C to A is yeah straightforward, right? As I just explained, so this is uh, easy to understand, right? But uh, why? Yeah, so yeah, suppose uh, why yeah why is it true when B yeah that the B leads to A? So let's try to understand this relationship. So again, if the columns of an A are linearly independent, and then we will always have a unique least square solution. Okay. So let's try to understand this part. So that part can be understood in this form. <clears throat> okay, so Okay, so the secret lies in this figure as well. So let's consider uh, the case where we have a unique solution for this least squares problem. What does that mean? So what is the meaning of having a unique solution for this minimization problem or the least squares problem? So that means, okay, so this part the minimum value of it, suppose yeah, someone uh, told you that the minimum value of this guy is 3, for example. So the length of the difference factor is 3. Okay, In that case, where is this value coming from? So this value comes from the difference between the vector b and the orthogonal projection b hat of this b. right? So it means... <coughs> The length of this vector becomes 3 and then in this case so is it possible that b hat is non-unique so yeah in other words is the orthogonal projection of particular b always unique or is it possible that uh, we have a uh, multiple i mean uh, multiple different point or vectors that are all orthogonal projection of the same B. <laughs> okay, so just to <clears throat> just to just to make you interested, yeah, let me ask uh, in, yeah questions in Korean. Also, yeah, also one projection is 항상 유니크한가요? 그러니까 어떤 내가 한점 B를 주고 서브스페이스를 줬어요. 그러면 이 점에 대한 이 스페이스로의 올서원의 프로젝션, 올서원의 프로젝션이 항상 유니크하게 나오나요? 아니면 그 올서원의 프로젝션이 여러 개가 있을 수 있나요? 네. 유니크하죠? 그죠? 유니크해요. 네. 유니크해요. 자, 그러면, so yeah, if we understand that, and then <웃음> this B hat is always unique, right? And then once we find this B hat, and then the problem boils down to Solving this linear system, a x hat equals b hat. So, which means, so we uniquely obtained this b hat as this vector, and then we now have to represent, or we now have to find the linear combination coefficient to represent this point by using the columns of an A. So that is the meaning of this matrix equation, right? So what, it, what was the meaning of this matrix equation? It was obtaining the solution for linear combination coefficient, which is in this part, okay? So that the linear combination of the columns of an A becomes the same as the given vector B hat, okay? So, <clears throat> so B hat is unique because that is the orthogonal projection. But when is our X hat unique? Okay, so that you want to a ga rectangular matrix in ga, what's here? You have the cut and space. Okay, so let me just ask a kind of simpler question. 
So here, um, this B is definitely inside of a column space of an A. So we, for sure, we know that this guy will have a solution. Okay. So in that case, so we are considering this case. Okay. So uh, yeah, we know that at least yeah we have either unique solution or infinitely many solution. So there are these two cases. <coughs> Which aspect determines between these two? I mean, which determines? Uh, every, row. every row? Every row has a pivot? That was about, that was about, that was about uh, whether we have a solution for any B, right? Right? So that was about whether our columns of an A spans the entire space of uh, A, uh, entire space of the universe, right? So in that case, for uh, whatever uh, given B, that is always inside of the column space of an A, right? So that way we always have a unique, uh, sorry, that, that way we always have some solution, whether it's a unique or multiple solutions, okay? But here the, the situation is, we know, uh, yeah, so suppose, yeah, our assumption is that B is inside of the column space of an A. So B is somewhere in our column space of an A. So that way we know that we have a solution, right? But we don't know whether we have a unique solution or infinitely many solutions. Which, which characteristic of A determines between these two? Eh? Column A pivot? Eh. If our uh, columns are linearly independent, so if the columns of an A are linearly independent, and then it will give unique solution. Which means, yeah, as uh, uh, the student said, if every column in our matrix A has a pivot, and then we will always have a unique solution, right? And also, that is the same thing as the fact, the case where we have, hit, uh, we have no free variable. So all the variables are basic variable. And that is the same as having the pivot in every column, right? So you guys should uh, remember, yeah, you guys should be very, very familiar with all these. Yeah, so, so yeah, so, yeah, otherwise you cannot do well in your final exam, right? Because the final exam will cover, cover the entire uh, scope of what we learned. Okay, <clears throat> so in order to have the unique solution, our matrix A ha should have the uh, linearly independent columns. Okay, so that was the condition. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, back to this figure. So up to B hat, so we understood B hat is unique because that's uh, also on a projection of particular B. Okay, and then in order to represent B as a linear combination of A, we have to solve this linear system. And then if this linear system has a unique solution for X hat, and it means A should have a linearly independent columns, right? So if A is, uh, has a linearly independent columns, and then for whatever given B hat, uh, the linear combination coefficient will be always uniquely defined. Right? The linear combination coefficient will be always uniquely defined, and that linear combination coefficient is obtained by solving this linear system. Right? <clears throat> and what was, uh, yeah, let's get back to the um, least squares thing. What was the solution for this guy? So, what was the meaning of this <coughs> linear system? That solution for this x hat was coinciding, or that was equivalent to the solution of this original least squares problem, right? So that way, if your A has a linearly independent columns, and then B hat, I mean the linear combination coefficient for representing B hat will be always uniquely defined, and thus that uniquely defined x hat will become your least squares solution. So. So we now, uh, uh oh, sorry, yeah, we now understood the equivalence between these A and B. Okay, 
네. 근데 엠바이엔이 그러니까 칼럼이 더 많을 때 네. 그때는 어차피 그 전체 스페이스를 사용하잖아요. 그러니까 every row에 피벗이 있다고 할때 네. 전체 스페이스를 사용하잖아요. 네. 그러면은 그랬을 때그 오스오브날 프로젝션이 참 네. 자신이니까 네. 그때도 유니크하다고 말했는데 그 저게 저게 두 개가 아 그러니까 B 해선 유니크한데 네. B 해선 유니크한 건 맞아요. 근데 과연 B 해설 나타내는 이 리니어 컴비네이션 코이피션트 요 A X 햇 이곳 B 햇요 X 햇이 유니크하냐 안 하냐가 바로 리스코일 솔루션 유니크하냐 안 하냐를 네. 음. 그런 이야기니까 그렇죠? 오케이 okay, any any other questions? 오케이, okay, so, um, so yeah, if one of these three statements are satisfied, which means if our x hat is uniquely defined, and that means this matrix A transpose A is invertible, and then this normal the solution for this normal equation will be always obtained in this form, right? Yeah, that is quite obvious. Okay. And then let's mention yeah, one more thing. So yeah, personally I think this is an uh, important thing. So this least square solution x hat is obtained. I'm just rewriting it. In this form, right? So this is your uh, least square solution. Okay? <coughs> And then, what is this guy? A x hat. So that was b hat, right? And that b hat. Ah, uh, come on, yeah. This b hat is <coughs> this guy, right? Orthogonal projection, right? So that b hat is the same as a x hat. Okay. And then this a x hat. Can be written as this form a times a transpose a inverse a transpose and b. Okay? So this whole part of a weird matrix. Okay? So let's think about the um, role or kind of effect of this kind of transformation. So this can be written as this kind of, yeah, this can be understood as a kind of transformation. So this is some matrix, right? So this is some matrix. Let's call that matrix as P, uh, maybe C, okay? So this is a C times B. And then, yeah, we can consider this transformation of, of mapping B to some matrix, some, ve some other vector, okay? And that transformation is defined as this matrix C. And then what was the what was this transformation? So what is the <coughs> result? The result is b hat. So what was the relationship between b and b hat? Yeah, this is an orthogonal projection, right? So given your matrix A, you want to obtain the transformation C that maps any vector b to the uh, to its orthogonal projection b hat onto your column space of an A. In that case, that matrix is defined in this form. <clears throat> okay? So that has this weird form, weird uh, shape, or, yeah. And also, yeah, let's relate, yeah, let's associate this part with the orthogonal projection thing, or, uh, orthogonal matrix or also normal matrix thing. So previously, we learned about the um, orthogonal matrix. Or yeah, so suppose our matrix Q. Has like the yeah also normal columns. So here, every column has the length of one, and then. Uh, they are orthogonal to each other, 
So let's consider this matrix Q. And in this case, we learned that this relationship, right? And also Q, Q transpose, yeah, and any vector B, for example. So B is three-dimensional vector, no. So this guy and this guy. So this is Q, Q transpose. And then we are considering the vector V. What was this Q, Q transpose? What was this matrix? I know you go well. The projection is there. So this was projection, right? This was a projection when your matrix Q has also normal columns, right? Okay. In that case, we just learned that in a uh, general matrix A, the um, orthogonal projection is represented as this form. Okay. In that case, this guy uh, should be consistent. I mean, uh, they should match. They should, yeah, uh, so they should not cont contradict with each other. So, yeah, so, um, so what I'm trying to show is uh, the case where A is set as Q, okay? In that case, this orthogonal projection, I mean, the, this matrix C is represented as Q, Q transpose Q, inverse Q transpose and B, right? And then if your matrix Q is has a also normal columns, and then this part will be, I mean this part will be identity matrix. So identity matrix, inverse of an identity matrix will be just an identity matrix. So we can just uh, remove them. <coughs> and the remaining part <coughs> is Q, Q transpose B. Right? So that way this guy becomes the same as what we previously uh, learned in the previous chapter. Okay? So again, uh, at a high level, uh, we started from this uh, least squares problem and then we derived, uh, we derived uh, it's a normal equation, right? So least square is uh, basically a minimization problem. But uh, in order to solve that minimization problem, uh, we have yeah it's equivalent to solving the uh, the the solving the least uh, the normal equation which is still a linear system okay and then also additionally yeah we learned this guy yeah we uh, we can view this part as a kind of a, uh, orthogonal projection of any vector b onto the column space of a. Okay, so <coughs> okay. Lastly, um, this theorem for uh, fifteen uh, is relating your uh, least square problem with the uh, uh, QR decomposition. So, what was a QR decomposition? So, given the matrix A that has a linearly independent column, and then we convert this matrix A into some matrix Q that has also normal vectors that spans the same column space. So here, core A is the same as core Q, right? But here, the basis of the column space of A was just a linearly independent, but in this case of Q, uh, they give, uh, they provide the um, uh, orthogonal basis, basically also normal basis, right? And then this R part was some kind of uh, a linear combination coefficient to create each column of A as a linear combination of this Q, right? So those linear combination coefficients were added in the place of a matrix R. Okay, then here uh, the theorem says so we are given this uh, QR factorization, and then um, so we consider still this kind of a linear uh, least square uh, 
problem of a x equals b, where b is not necessarily inside of column space of an a. Okay. So in this case, the solution is also uh, obtained or the uniquely obtained in this form. So this is really simple. <coughs> uh, let's see. So suppose x hat is this guy, and then we plug that into a x hat, and then a becomes q r, and then x hat becomes this guy, and then q r, which is a, a and this part is a x hat, and then r r transpose yeah r r inverse gets cancelled out, and q q transpose b. Okay, and then what is this guy? As we just saw in the previous example, this one is orthogonal projection of B onto uh, yeah, a column space of an A or a column space of Q, right? And that way we can know, we know this guy is for sure is this uh, B hat. Okay? Uh, Okay, also, uh, let me uh, derive the solution in a different form. <coughs> okay, so, so what was the original problem of uh, least squares? So this guy, right? So this was uh, uh, the original least squares formulation. Okay, so again, the solution of this guy is the same as a transpose a x equals a transpose b, which is our normal equation, right? Okay, but uh, we start from this equation, or this minimization problem. Then, this can be rewritten as qrx2, right? If a has a qr decomposition, okay? Okay, and then uh, so let's yeah, so we bring this out and then let's consider this. Okay, so let's consider the length of this vector. So this is just a uh, uh, result of multiplying Q transpose on the left of this vector. So this, as a whole, this vector is one some column vector, right? And then we consider Q transpose that column vector, Q transpose times that column vector. So there is this guy, okay? So again, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, we have we should have two here, and then qrx. Uh, okay. So in this case, um, in the case of matrix Q being an orthogonal matrix. I mean, also, also normal matrix, then the length of this vector did not change. So you guys remember this? Q, yeah, this was one of the pro, uh, exam problem. This is the same as this guy, right? So this kind of a, a multiplication of matrix Q, that has a also normal columns that does not change the um, angles or lengths. Okay. So in this manner, <coughs> this is just the same as this guy, which is the uh, original thing. Okay. So again, yeah, so I should have started from here. 
So again, even if we multiply Q transpose on the left-hand side, the length doesn't change. So the length doesn't change, and then that leads us to this guy, Q transpose B minus Q transpose Q minus uh, times Rx. Okay, and then Q transpose Q is identity matrix, and then it becomes Q transpose B minus Rx. Okay. So in this case, R is definitely an upper triangular matrix, right? R is a square matrix. Then uh, this upper part is non-zero and the lower part is zero. And then uh, if we consider the determinant of this guy, all these non-negative, uh, all these uh, diagonal values uh, are non-zero, right? So that was the, yeah, that was always, that is always the case when uh, your matrix A has a linearly independent columns, right? And then this matrix, I mean, uh, uh, if we think about the determinant of this matrix, the determinant will be non-zero. So basically the determinant of this triangular matrix is just a product of the diagonal entries. And then all the diagonal entries are non-zero. And then the determinant of this matrix is non-zero. And then this matrix R is always invertible. Okay, so that way we can kind of obtain that R inverse Q transpose B. Okay, so, um, so that way we can obtain the solution from a uh, different approach. Okay, so that's it for this least squares problem. Okay, so that concludes chapter six, about which is about the uh, orthogonality and the least squares. Okay, and then, yeah, we will now move on to this new chapter of, where is it? This guy, eigenvectors, eigenvalues. Okay. Yeah, and then. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't have a connection, but uh, yeah, just for fun, yeah, I provided some yeah, some weird uh, cartoons. Okay, so this is your this is your homework <laughs> to check check this cartoon out. Okay, and then yeah, before starting this chapter, I'm gonna just uh, rather uh, stop here for today's class. <laughs> so yeah that's it for today and then let's meet next time and uh, we will start learning about this eigenvectors and eigenvalues which is chapter 5